click the bell, turn on all notifications, and subscribe for around the clock WWE news in real time. The home of the most consistent and dedicated breaking news in WWE, Sean's View Ends, is here for you. Like, comment, and share today. We have explosive updates, so become a channel member today. Donate and share this video all over the entire internet and tell your friends, your girlfriends, your boyfriends. Tell everyone you know that Show and Entertainment keeps you in the know on all WWE. Breaking news right at the top of the video. Braun Breaker, as we all know, made his main roster debut at the Royal Rumble, signaling that WWE has significant plans for him. The company has been hinting at a partnership between Breaker and Paul Heyman, and we all saw the destruction of what Braun Breaker did on Monday Night Raw. And they've been working together since last year. And now there are updates on their working relationship. Are we going to see Paul Heyman and Braun Breaker together on WWE television? Not just behind the scenes. Well, as previously reported, WWE has been laying the groundwork for a future program involving Paul Heyman. Wow. When Braun Breaker transitioned to Monday Night Raw, it became clear that he was working closely with Paul Heyman. During the May 20th episode of Monday Night Raw, Breaker faced off against NXT star Kale Dixon, Breaker utterly demolished Dixon, showcasing a level of brutality reminiscent of Brock Lesnar in 2002. Fans immediately recognized Paul Heyman's influence in the segment. The dirt sheets, the websites, the newsletters, ringside news, along with Sean View Entertainment, was informed through WWE producers that Paul Heyman has been working behind the scenes with Braun Breaker. Heyman even prominently mentioned Breaker in his WWE Hall of Fame speech, further solidifying their connection. Being a Paul Heyman guy is one of the most and best opportunities for a WWE star. With Heyman personally involved in Breaker's development, fans are optimistic about the young wrestler's future in the WWE. Heyman even highlighted Breaker in his WWE Hall of Fame speech, showing their strong connection and that dynamic. Are you for this or are you against Braun Breaker and Paul Heyman working together as a team and as a tandem? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also, Zilla Fought 2 says that Roman Reigns is crazy for calling himself the head of the table. What does this all mean? What is this all alluding to? You can only imagine. Also, MVP is undergoing stem cell therapy for multiple nagging injuries. Are we going to see the return to the ring of, Braun, of, 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 of MVP? Now, see, viewers, I was asked. It was demanded from my viewers, my subscribers, my fans to go in more in-depth on the stories and not just highlight them. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you more time, more effort, and I'm already giving you enough emotion and excitement. But we're going to give you even more of what you've asked for. Also, the OC revealed their intentions after a brutal assault on the May 21st WWE NXT. You're going to wonder how far these guys are going to catapult in the tag team division. The tag team rings. Also, breaking news on Sasha Banks, Dean Ambrose, the WWE looking to buy out. Oh, well, they got contracts, Sean. They got contracts to AEW. They're signed to AEW. And I would say you're right. You're correct. You're 100% correct. They are signed, delivered, and contracted. They got the the name on the dotted line, but what if the WWE buys out the contract that you see? The last time Dean Ambrose and WWE were together, it was under the tutelage of Vince McMahon. It was under the direction of Vince McMahon. The creative was Vince McMahon. But now we got Triple H working there. And I think there's a better with poor between Triple H and Dean Ambrose and Sasha Banks. So with Triple H running WWE like a well-oiled unit, can you imagine what it's going to be like when WWE attempts to buy out the contracts they're going to they're gonna buy them for more money than they're getting paid by AEW, according to the rumors and the speculation online. Are we about to see Dean Ambrose and Sasha Banks back in the WWE? Do you want to see them back in the WWE? Because according to rumors and speculation, the WWE is looking at reigniting the Shield together, not only having the, uh, the, the OG bloodline versus the new bloodline that we have right now, but the WWE wants to have another showcasing of the Shield and the WWE is always interested, especially under the direction of Triple H in the WWE, wants a return of Sasha Banks. Your thoughts, your comments. Do you want to see the return of Dean Ambrose and WWE under the direction of Triple H? And do you want to see Sasha Banks, now known as Mercedes Monet? Do you, or do you like them better in AEW? Should they stay in AEW? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also, Shayna Baszler vows to teach Lola Vice a lesson after a shocking betrayal on NXT. And Lola Vice and Shayna Baszler are set to clash at WWE NXT 
battleground. Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions on that. Also, ladies and gentlemen, WWE's progress in crowning a first champion for NXT's North American title. Are you interested? Are you invested in the NXT North American Championship? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. And do you think Tony Khan will even allow WWE to buy out contracts from AEW, from TNA, from other entities, other industries, other wrestling promotions? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. But that's not all. We got a hell of a lot more to cover. WWE confirms Sexy Red's NXT appearance. Are you interested and invested? Are you intrigued by the idea of Sexy Red coming to the WWE? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. You know, the WWE really does need to get back into building up these guys and girls coming up to the main roster. Or even NXT with vignettes, promos. You know, get us introduced. Get us to know what these guys and girls are all about and what they're going to bring to the table. Breaking news on John Moxley, Dean Ambrose. Now, we just talked about him earlier, about how the WWE could buy out his contract, buy out Sasha Banks' contract, so they could return to the WWE where that is home, where the fans want to see the return of Dean Ambrose. But listen to this one. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. We've got breaking news. They'll come in right now. John Moxley says that he doesn't see Wild Thing, which is his current AEW song, as his song. But we just got breaking news on Randy Orton, guys. This just coming through the desk of Sean's View Entertainment right now. This just is breaking news. And yes, my computer is at a desk and it's coming through on my phone. Randy Orton is breaking silence on a career-threatening injury diagnosis. Randy Orton is now absolutely break. Oh, no, does Randy Orton have another career-threatening injury diagnosis or is this the same one? We're going to get into it right now. I had top neurologists telling me that, you know what, you had a great career, you have a life after wrestling, and you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be in pain for the rest of your life. We're going to fix your back, but you're going to have to stop wrestling. The first six months that I was out, I was in that back, I had that in the back of my mind, and it was tough, and it was mentally very challenging. Um, but Randy Orton somehow, in some way, was able to make a return. Speculation of the Viper retiring peaked for a very long time, but it seems like Randy Orton has had to have the kind of working out, the kind of um, sustainability, the kind of we were all, and I, somehow, some way, Randy Orton was able to re- re- return uh, to in-ring action. I don't know how he did it, but Randy Orton must have some of the best doctors in training in, in the world. And as you can see, Randy Orton has bulked up a hell of a lot. So we don't know how much longer Randy Orton has, but let's enjoy him while he is there. Also, viewers, fans, and subscribers, just coming through the desk of the brash and the brazen, Austin Theory claims that the current era has surpassed the Attitude Era's peak. Do you agree with one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, Austin Theory, that the WWE Attitude Era has been surpassed by this current era? Listen, this current era is pretty damn good. It's solid. It's on fire. But I just don't think anybody or anything can beat the Attitude Era, especially the kind of roster that we had assembled, the kind of characters, the kind of storylines, the kind of angles, the kind of intrigue. The one thing I will say is the matches are a lot better nowadays than back in the day because the matches back then were only three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes long on Raw because WWE focused more on storylines and angles, which I love. I'm all for the storylines and the angles and the emotion. Also, in a breaking news update that many people didn't think was going to come, they thought it was going to go downward. They thought it was going to go down the toilet. However, WWE Raw for the May 20th episode saw a viewership increase. It actually saw an increase viewers, fans, and subscribers. Also, we got breaking news on Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes, champion versus champion. Listen to this tidbit. WWE actually never intended Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul as title versus title match, but that is exactly what we're getting, and that is exactly what the world saw. Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also, Lola Vice challenges Sexy Red to deliver on RKO during... Oh, to deliver an RKO on the WWE NXT broadcast in WWE's Hopeful that the OC will be an envision in themselves as WWE lifers. Austin Theory challenges Conor McGregor to a potential handicap match. Are we going to see Conor McGregor in the WWE? Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also, Rowan University was been, was caught in WWE's latest mystery with a mysterious QR code. And controversial figure Alex Jones stands up for professional wrestling. Now, is this a good look for pro wrestling? Is this a damning thing for pro wrestling? Alex Jones in the WWE or professional wrestling in general. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Alba Fi grieves the loss of her beloved mother. A massive heartbreaking loss in the world of the world wrestling entertainment. Also, 
the WWE Queen of the Rings semifinals match sets a shocking record. Also, EO Sky and Dakota Kai's health status after a bloody after their bloody wounds on the 520 WWE Raw is being revealed. Also, Dominic Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio is responding to speculation about teaming up with Liv Morgan. Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions on that tandem. What do we want to see? Also, there is a call for Jacob Fatu to dominate top WWE superstars following his debut. Are you looking forward to the return or the debut of Jacob Fatu to the WWE? As you can see, the bloodline is growing. They're assembling and they're ascending in the WWE. It's all about your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also, Texas Attorney General responds to a WWE lawsuit preventing the Royal Rumble bidding contract release. And Dominic Mysterio addresses the possibility of leaving the Judgment Day. And now all that, all these rumors and news are swirling about Dom and Liv Morgan. And we talk about Damian Priest going on as a good guy, going on by himself as a singles competitor. Not only I don't think are we going to see, not only are we not going to, not only are we all, all uh, uh, wow. <laughs> this is how revved up I get, guys. This is how revved up I get. That was a botch and blooper. That'll be all over the botches and bloopers on YouTube.com. Not only are we going to see Dom leave and the world champion and Damian Priest, but I think the entire Judgment Day is going to come to shambles. They're going to blow up. The, the entire Judgment Day is going to be null and void at the end of the day in my, in my expectation of anticipation. Also, we got breaking news. Drew McIntyre never considered going somewhere else amidst WWE contract negotiations. So it appears as if Drew McIntyre is here to stay in the WWE. Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Liv Morgan is considering acting as a next career move after WWE, but she says she ain't going anywhere anytime soon. She is remaining in the WWE. Also, Mercedes Monet hints at a reunion with former WWE star after AEW double or nothing. And, ladies and gentlemen, in earth-shattering news, Blockbuster. WWE announces a return to Japan for the first tour in five years. That is major, and that is huge for the fans over there in Japan. Your thoughts, your comments, and your opinions. Also this morning on The Brash and The Brazen, The Rock looks unrecognizable in his first glance from an upcoming A24 movie. In former WWE personality claims that the company WWE only wants fans at press conferences. In Cody Rhodes reveals the moment he shared the secret that he shared with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 40. And Drew McIntyre launches a scathing rant about Damian Priest being unworthy of world champion. Do you think Damian Priest deserves, has earned to be champion? Should he have a long reign as world champion on Raw? Or do you trust and believe in what Drew McIntyre had to say? Also, Cody Rhodes reveals career-defining goal he aims to achieve before his retirement. Your thoughts, your comments, your opinions. And remember, for rent for you, there would be no show in view. Stay true to this very channel today, tomorrow in the past, the present, the future. And now, the time is here.